Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today, I'm so excited to be interviewing the wonderful Mary Henderson. Now, Mary is a transformational leader and an internationally recognized personal branding and online business specialist. Mary helps industry experts systemize, digitalize, gee, that's a bit of a tongue twister, and commercialize their knowledge, wisdom, and skills into a scalable and profitable online business and brand so they can become the authority in their niche. Mary has over 22 years of experience building seven and eight figure businesses and building high performance sales team in the IT sector and 15 years delivering online solutions for large and small businesses. She has been featured in many publications and is regarded as a thought leader in the digital sector. Mary's point of difference is her personal branding technology, a SAAS platform, so I'd like to know more about that later, that has the ability to define a person's brand essence with precision that can be applied across all communication touch points. When you engage Mary, you access 40,000 hours of knowledge, wow, and wisdom and experience in personal branding client profiling, lead generation strategies, online course development, sales leadership, content development, and digital acumen. Mary embraces technology and social media in a big way, and her followers are growing daily. Mary is a heart-centered, which you'll see, compassionate and tenacious entrepreneur who thrives on human transformation and witnessing people fulfill their dreams. Welcome welcome <laughs> thank you janelle i'm so glad that we're together and we get to to spend time together and talk and uh, it's just so exciting so thank you for having me my pleasure and i'm reading that last paragraph yes. Mary, and i'm like that sounds like me and i can I, you know oh like, that sort of sounds like me you know, that's something i would write and it's um and i suppose oh. that's why when i've been watching your work and what yes. you do I've really seen myself in you and I know we're like wow. a different way. Yes. So um, I just wanted you to know that because yeah, I love that, that. all of those things, your values come out in that, in that bio. Yeah. So um, Thank yeah, you. Thanks, and, you know, very Thank similar you. to mine. So how would you define, how would you define why personal branding is so important for entrepreneurs? I think that today personal branding is really port important, Janelle, from the standpoint of um, activating your wisdom and and but looking at it through the eyes of uh, it as a currency. Because in the past, people have sold this notion that personal branding really is about getting famous quick or getting rich quick or, you know, how do I grow my influence across social media? I actually think that that's well and truly been and gone. And I think what, because because I'll tell you why, consumers are really smart today. You know, we, 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 we hear this notion that we're in the information economy. We're actually in the information age, but we're, we're in the wisdom economy. And what I mean by that is that, you know, a lot of uh, consumers are discerning, you know, who's fake and who's real. In other yeah. words, who can deliver a transformation? Who can deliver results? Who can deliver the outcome that I'm looking for? And that's the path I want to go down. And so, so from that perspective, we have to look at branding with through a completely different lens. And that means that when I'm branding or helping a client brand their themselves, it's not them as a physical human, as a body that I'm branding. It's their core essence, it's their learned knowledge, it's their learned skills that has become their skill set, it's their gifts, it's their natural gifts, may, may I add, it's their natural talents, it's their passions, it's what they stand for, it's their core values. And most importantly, it's the story. Because if what you're selling as a solution doesn't match or it's not congruent with the brand and all of those attributes, you're going to have some pretty difficult a difficult time selling the service 
um, and and you know and and also attracting the right type of clients yeah. because we've bypassed that 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 phase of you know the guru coaches the seven figure guru coaches who've been spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on Facebook uh, advertising to buy leads and sell scarcity through a sales team and using a script those days are actually gone because a lot of those guys are out of business now. So, mm -hmm. so they really don't have a brand because if they had a, had a brand, they don't need to do the advertising to that level. So for me today, personal branding really is, is so different to what it was even a year ago because right now we are looking at those that I call the wisdom holders and there's opportunity there in a massive way. But brand, for branding to stand out, it's those people that have got real experience that can bring the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth into the marketplace and actually sell results and outcomes. That to me is where branding is right now. Yeah, I love that. And I think that that transparency and authenticity, as you said, I think people are smart, right? And they mm -hmm. can see, usually see bullshit from, from you know, um, very clearly and I yes. think that that's why I think and it's I think that's the exciting time for entrepreneurs too mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. you know I often say to my clients that uh, it's great to have professional videos and professional photos done and stuff like that but people also want to see your realness mm -hmm. they want to see that raw uh, that raw uh, content that you've got as well yes um, and I think years ago as you said years ago it was quite different Mm -hmm. polished everything had to be perfect mm -hmm. whereas now I think people like to go well I'm a little bit like you you know I, I see myself in you because you're not yes. perfect you're mm -hmm. you know and I can actually see for you for what it is and even celebrities mm -hmm. now are mm -hmm. showing photos without makeup and all that sort of stuff yeah and I think that but even in that you know it's like we have to step out of worshipping the ego because we've We've been brainwashed to believe that that materialism and the ego is the driver of everything, including our branding, when in actual fact, it couldn't be further from the truth. And you said a very important word, you know, and that's authenticity. You know, yeah. it's we all have our authentic soul print, our authentic DNA print. My thumbnail print's different to yours. So already we are authentic so that we don't have to be authentic we are authentic we're born authentic and so I think that you're right it's really about showing up and just being truthful and honest and being who you truly are as opposed to who others want you to be mm. or how you believe you need to show up because your competitors showing up like this also I better do the same thing that's yeah. the worst thing to do if you want to kill your brand yeah and I think a lot of you know, there's a couple of things I'm thinking right now is that I mm -hmm. think that People do wear that mask. Yes. Who they think they should be. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, Mary, because I do a lot of behavioural profiling and yes, and, uh, understanding people's personality styles, yes. and people styles, and what sometimes they put up at first is very, very different to who yes. they actually are. And so I can imagine when you're working with clients, yes, that you're helping them drop that mask, yes. But also, do you find that that sometimes when you're having those conversations and exploring their personal brand, that they have big aha moments of who who they are? Well, this is that that my my personal branding software, which is yeah. a, it's a SaaS platform, which is software as a service. That's what SaaS stands for. Yes, I said S A A S. I love that. that. Sounds oh. even better. <laughs> You know, I come from a technology background, so you can take the girl out of tech, but you can't take the tech out of girl, right? <laughs> yeah. but, but that technology has been designed so that when people work with me, they go into that application. And essentially what I'm doing, Janelle, is I'm unpacking all their attributes based yeah. on who they truly are because you have to give me the truth. Because when I'm working with someone, that foundation has to be all them. It's no good for them to say, oh, Mary, you know, my aspiration is to be Oprah. I'm like, oh, well, that's nice, but I don't know Oprah's attributes. So I can't make you Oprah. I don't know how to do that. 
But, but, but when I have their attributes, it's like data. I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, I can do something with this. This is inventory. This is juice. This is, this is currency for me. Now I can take all of this information. I can package it so that it's congruent with, with specifically the solution or the complex problem that you can solve. We need to marry that together. Yeah. Do you find though that there's that, as you're unpacking it, that there's this, uh, because sometimes people see themselves Again, that mask comes up. Yes. They might actually start to give you the responses of who they think they are. No, it never happens like that, Janelle, because the thing is that when I'm working with them and and all of that inventory comes out, even they have the epiphany as they're going through the process. They're like, oh, my God, like, look at all my gifts. Look at all my talents. Look at all my abilities look at all my skills look at so they can they get this look at my core values so yeah. they're looking at the a, a holistic picture of their 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 own truth you know yeah. and, and and i think that we say but i already know you know what i'm good at i already know my i already know my abilities i already know my personality i already know my values trust me if you knew your values you would be showing up every day and those values will be your core drivers. And I can promise you that 99.9% of people are not uh, pursuing and following and live in their value system. They say that they do, but they don't because, because your value systems are like your mantra. They're like your affirmation. You know, you've got to live that, that, that value. And so and so when I'm working with people, it's not so much that the facade falls out. What it is more so is like, wow, that's look how much, look how far I've come. Look how much inventory I have. Oh my God. It's more like that. And that for me is just like, wow, because then you've got attention and then they can see for themselves. I'm actually seriously sitting on a gold mine. And, and that changes the whole you know, mindset of you know what what they become with that currency yeah it's, so they really find they they're seeing what their their superpowers are yes and so that must give them a lot of confidence because a lot of people uh will look particularly when they've got to step up they've got to step out as yeah. entrepreneurs they're often judging themselves compared to comparing themselves to others as you said before like, oh i want to be like oprah or i want to be what like somebody else but when you actually, I can imagine you unpacking that with them, yes. they go, wow, I've actually got something really amazing that no one else has got because, you know, we're all as unique as our fingerprint. Yes. yes. Um, and that must really build confidence in people. I think also, uh, Janelle, the thing that I'm more focused on is um, having the ability to tap into somebody at a soul level and activate all of that currency, you know, the courage, the strength, the attributes, but really activate it. And, you know, and there is a certain way to do that, which I feel that I've mastered in my own way over many, many years of, you know, actually working with alchemy and, you know, just my own internal uh, shadow work. And of course, my corporate background and my career, all of that packaged together, you know, you, you become, you become something bigger than what you are, but isn't that the beautiful thing about growth is that you are you're able to pass it on to other people but I think activating is a, such an important part of this process because what I see Janelle there's two types of people in the coaching business one is one comes from a place of self-interest yeah, and the yeah. other one comes from a place of genuinely empower inner empowerment and also empowering others this is what I mean the activation so so and and that's it there's no in between and I feel that the majority are in self-interest, even though they don't uh, they don't admit it. And I know that because when I'm working with people or in the past, I've only ever worked with two people that told me that they had all of this accumulated wisdom and they had nothing. I can't work with nothing. I need the foundation. I need inventory to help that person package a solution you know, into a program, a course, whatever they want to do with it. But the thing is that for me, that's where the problem lies. It's not, look, I don't know how to, who, who I want to be, or I don't know how to get out there and sell what I do. It's about where, where are you coming from to begin with? Mm -hmm. Because if you're coming from a place of self-interest, it's going to be very, very, very hard to create success out of that because that has an end yeah. of life date. 
But if you come from the standpoint of activation, self-empowerment uh, from that place, you've got wisdom that's carrying you and supporting you. And the, the language is so different because you've got nothing to lose. It's the truth. I'm showing up as who I am based on 20 years experience. I know how to solve your problem. I know where to go. I know who needs it. I know the language that I need to speak around it. I'm here. When you're ready, the teachers, when the student's ready, the teacher will arrive. Yeah. I love how you talk about that self-interest because it's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I remember one of my mentors actually said this and it really stuck with me. It was about, we, it's about, imagine, you know, we talk about legacy. A yes. Lot. Yes. And when he talked about legacy, he said, imagine that you left an imprint, a positive imprint on the world mm -hmm. and on different people and you get no credit for it, none. No one says good job. No one says JJ did this for me or Mary did this for me. You just did it and then you get no credit for it. And he said, that's what I want. I want to be able to do these ripples and make this Correct. change without yeah. any and I just love that because often, mm. you know, we talk about legacy and legacy is a little bit about self-interest too because mm -hmm. it's about what, a, you know, people will remember me and, um, you know, I'm writing a book at the moment and and so, it's you know, it's it's it needs to be not about me. It's about what I'm giving out and... Yes. But we are so much about self-interest. In fact, I remember doing a post once on Facebook and it was hilarious because... I'd said a post about, you know, on, on Facebook and social media, often you'll see these videos where people go out to the yeah. you know, people that are on the street and they're like, I'm going to give them $100, yes. you know, yes. and it's all about them. And I did this post and I said, I want everyone, whoever wants to contribute, I want you to do something for somebody and not tell anyone about it. No one, no one. And then I started to get these comments to say, oh, I do that all the time. Please. <laughs> you know, Please. and so it's still like I want to get that recognition mm. and it's still about us. Well, and that's, think, yeah. Well, I think, Janelle, also that's just society and brainwashing that we've been brought to believe that the worship of the ego is the most important thing that we should be chasing. Yeah. Uh, people won't even understand what that means. They just think the ego is, oh, you know, showing off and, you know, showing off what you wear and what you drive. No, I'm not talking about that. You yeah. know, I'm talking about the false self here, you know, and how yeah. the false self, you know, plays tricks on us. And, you know, once we understand that, to your point, I don't need recognition. I already know how good I am at what I do. I don't need yeah. someone to tell me that, you know, I've I, I, I've mastered what I've done. I mean, 40,000 hours, are you kidding me? You know, like that's not three self-help books. That's a lot of, you know, failures, a lot of learned knowledge and skills and rinsing and repeating. And yeah. so the thing is that the moment we're looking for recognition, we're, in, we're on the wrong path. We're already halfway to failure, already. Yeah, yeah. And I think that takes a lot of personal growth to get there. With it a does. Lot of and a lot of, you know, where there's been so much conditioning mm. in your life, you know, uh, and I think yes. the last few years is something that we've all, you know, looked at our different belief systems and our mm -hmm. values. And I think that we've always got to be looking at. Yes. And aware of all of that as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 100%. So your SAS platform, tell me a little bit more about that. SAS. I know it's I know it's very yeah, it sassy. Even better than S A A S. S A A S is a little bit like that show, you know, that they compete. I love SAS, it. I love SAS. I love technology. I mean, you know, I had a software company for seven years, so how could I not incorporate technology in my business? But technology yeah. is actually a very big part of my business. Um you know, and technology comes very easy to me. So it's not like something that I've got to go and look at or learn. It's just my natural state, I guess. Um I built that platform because I wanted my, before clients get on, you know, their onboarding session with me, I want them to be able to uh, provide me with like real hardcore, honest data. Cause if I can look at that, 
I actually, I already can figure out their trajectory. I can already see, you know, what they stand for, their core values. Um, I can understand what their persona is going to look like. It gives us a, a real beautiful uh, understanding of what their tone and their voice and their color palette is going to look like, the language, the story. There's so many different elements in there. And, and, and that also helps me help them create an actual program into a system, Janelle. And this is a very yeah. important point because when you're building systems, it's a very different mindset to building a course. You know, courses are informational. I don't, I'm not interested in that. You know, that's, the, that's of no value to me. Coming from a software background, you know, we build membership systems for the academic sector, but we built it based on what the, how the students wanted to experience the software, not the academics. You know, it was very much understanding how does that, those students, what, what goes through their brain when they're actually, you know, dissecting this information? So I had cognitive scientists in my company. Like that's that's the, the, the detail that we were passionate about. And, and we, you learn through that and through those cognitive scientists that when you can gather data, you can build a phenomenal system specifically designed for the end user. So, so, and we have to look at it like this, my vision for my program and my solution must always be able to support my client's mission. Yeah. See the difference here? Yeah. It's not about, you know, me saying, oh, I'm just going to build this program and I'm going to get all these people, you know, on board. It can't be like that. You know, I mean, I'm, when I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to you with, you know, 17 years of this knowledge, like it's in my DNA. Like I know that it works when you do it like this. So the platform gives me all of this amazing information. And then the client, you know, spends time with me in our onboarding session when I'm unpacking all of this, but they actually get a solution that can, can solve a complex problem, can yeah, yeah. deliver an outcome, can deliver a result and can deliver the transformation that they're promising. If we yeah. can't meet that, it, there's no program. How do you yeah, charge yeah. premium pricing if I can't deliver that? I don't want any more information. That's what the seven-figure gurus were selling, information that got nowhere. So their yeah. brand went into a brand crisis. When I want brand advocates, yeah. two very different mindsets. Yeah. And, well, and it's so interesting in regards to, like, this artificial intelligence that's happening right now. Yes. How all of what you're bringing to life is is just, there's no comparison. Well, the thing is, Janelle, that artificial intelligence and the AI systems that are generating all this content, it's it, whilst there's no heart and soul, you know, in an AI machine, the holders of wisdom will use AI machines to enhance what they do. Do you see what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah, it will yeah. it will be used to empower rather than disempower. There's people yeah. that are in the place of self-interest, they will use AI machines to create the information that they're selling, you see, yeah. because they don't have yeah. the wisdom. But the holders of wisdom, they only will use AI machines to empower them. It's a yeah. completely different mindset. Yeah. So that's going to complement or enhance yes. what they're already doing. Um, by using AI rather than big, just big, relying on that AI where exactly that's, that's what I'm hearing. Most people are the opposite of that. Mm. Like, oh, this is great. It can do all of my, you know, uh, my emails or my, you know, my yeah. blogs or whatever, really relying on on them to to do stuff rather than, you know, the special uniqueness of, of our brand, our personal brand. I'm okay with AI machinery creating content as long as you actually get the, the foundation of it and then tweak it so your tone and voice is, you know, is woven into, into the copy, you know, because yeah. you still have to bring your heart into the copy, right? Yeah. But the other thing is I want to say is if you, it, without a, a strategy or without showing up strategically and deliberately in everything that we do, 
no AI machine is going to make us rich quick. No, no, it's, 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 it's not there for that. And I think that those people that are, come from a self-interest, that's their mindset. Oh, yeah. my God. There's not, for me, it's like, how much time can it save? For the others, it's like, oh, my God, I'm going to make so much money now. I mean, do you see the difference? Just energetically, yeah. it's completely different. Yeah. And often, well, it's like I have the conversations with my clients about how many yeah. people we're going to serve. Yes. How many are going to transform? Yes, correct. You know, and, and and then that connects with your purpose, mm-hmm. um, you know, because if your, you know, your purpose is transforming people and changing lives and it's big, it's a big purpose, then that's what can get you up every morning. Yes. Um, in the good times and in the challenging times as well. Totally. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting too that when we talk about personal brand mm. and we were having this conversation off air before in regards to, you know what, and I often get asked this question: Is how much do we share of ourselves? And you know, there's so much. You know, when you go online and you've got your personal brand and you're authentically you, and you know, one of the things that I talk about for my brand is that I transparency is really important to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and using your voice. Mm-hmm. So there's all stuff that happens in the world, which has happened a lot in the last three years. Yes. Do people speak up about controversial issues or do they not? What's your thoughts around that? I believe in context. I think that whatever you do to me has to be in context with what I do. There has to be some, if I'm going to be transparent, say in a post and tell a story, it has to lead back to what I do. So there needs to be context because, Janelle, who cares about my opinion? Like, quite frankly, who yeah, cares? Yeah. Just because I have an opinion, I don't want to air it because it's my opinion. It doesn't mean anything. It's not fact. It's not fiction. It's just my opinion. But yeah. if I can bring an opinion in a post but tie it in with contextually with what I do, then I've utilised that time and that space to benefit me in my business and the the, the 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 higher good of the audience I'm trying to start a conversation with. Do you see what I mean? So yeah, yeah. for me, time is everything. So if I'm going to waste time posting, I better make sure that I get some sort of ROI from that time and that effort. So yeah. having my opinion heard is of no value to anyone. No one cares. No one cares about our degrees. No one cares about, you know, how many children we have. No one cares about whether your kids go to public or private school. No one cares whether you're a Muslim, Protestant, Jew or a Christian. No one cares. You know, no one cares whether you're married or divorced. They don't care. But we think that if we go online and we start talking about, oh, yes, I just got a divorce and it's such a bad breakup. And, you know, let me just tell you about three lessons that I learned about divorce. I actually don't care. Like it's of no value to me. But if you're a divorce coach and you got divorced and I'm in that process, you've got my attention. See yeah. the difference? Yeah, 100%. And I think you know, particularly with what's happened in the last couple of years with COVID and stuff, with personal branding, you mentioned this before about some high-profile people, mm-hmm. how what the, when we're talking about authenticity and, and your personal brand that some of what they were doing or talking about conflicted with what people thought their personal brand was yes so uh for one um Deepak Chopra yes for instance, he was all about health and talking about you know everything sort of natural yes. sort of stuff and then he did lots of big posts on make sure you wear a mask right and so then he had this he had this whole lot of his audience that were like, hold on a minute, <laughs> this is very different to all the other things that you have been preaching for your whole career. And so well, was like, there's a conflict here. Well, actually, Janelle, that's a perfect example of self-interest because, see, the self-help industry is designed for one thing, to feed the ego. And where does the ego lead you? Guaranteed self-destruction, guaranteed. So all these people that follow self-help, like the Deepak Chopras, he's going to lead you to a dead end, which he proved that that's exactly what he was doing. Because they're in that game 
for self-interest. They're mm -hmm. being paid to sell an ideology, self-help, and all the layers on top of that so that the, the millions of followers, you know, would actually fall for the trap. What they don't realise, that perhaps the millions of followers have actually woken up and become consciously aware that they've been heading down a false start for the last five, ten years, and yeah. now they're looking for a real transformation that this guy can't give. Or worse still, that that industry, the self-help industry, is designed to lead to a false start. So, again, it's all based on self-interest, all of it. And yeah. so until we actually learn that and accept that, we can't move on. And, and it's up to us to be able to see through that fog and, and realise, oh, my God, like I've been following this person for so long, but really I've been following this false uh, you know, hero, if you will, that I've put yeah. all my energy into believing in everything he or she is saying, when in actual fact, it was false to begin with. So yeah. to yeah. me, that's what that indicates. And he's probably in, in a brand crisis as well. But there are a lot of people that will still follow him and believe in him and, you know, yeah. all that sort of thing. But, you know, we just have to discern. But this is what I was saying before. There are a lot of people now that are going the other way and saying, you know what, I'm not interested in that. Just give me a real, a real uh, a coach who's who can give me real transformation, real results, real outcomes. I'm not interested in any of this self help stuff. Just give me the bottom line. Give me what I want, and, and I'll pay for it. Just be honest with me. That's I think where we're heading. Yeah, yeah, and that's exciting. <laughs> yes, yes, that's exciting because I think that, and I think that, you know, with the challenges of the last few years, that's been I think the great thing that's come out mm -hmm. of all of the challenges in the year yes. because people are suddenly questioning stuff and 100 both you and i work with a lot of entrepreneurs and i think the great thing about being an entrepreneur often is that you have to look outside the box yes you have to question things and yes one of my one of my biggest teachers and i often yes. say this was always my son Wow. And I remember, uh, I remember, and I, I've said this story so many times, but it's so, it's so simple and important that I remember once my son, we went to the Melbourne Zoo and he was only like a little, he was only tiny. I can't remember. He was probably about four years of age or something like that. And we went to the zoo and they were, they had this seal enclosure and the guy was, you know, he had his mic and he was doing this demonstration with the seals. Yeah. And the guy said, oh, has anyone got any questions? And we're up high looking down. And I didn't know that my son put his hand up. And he said, oh, yes, you young man. And I'm like, oh, my. Oh my. And then <laughs> honestly, I was embarrassed, Mary. I'm like, what's he going to say? Right? What's this little kid going to say? And so he said, how many seals are there? And the first thing I thought was, how embarrassing. There's three. You can see the seals, right? And then, now this is a coach saying I'm open-minded. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Three <laughs> seals. And I'm like embarrassed. I'm like, oh, he's only, you know, he's only four or whatever. Yes. And sort of downgrading his question. And then the guy said, what a great question because we have three seals here and then we have another enclosure that has another three. And such a simple story, yes. but it made me think, shit, I was so close-minded because all I could see was this Yep. when there's a lot more that I didn't see. Wow. I wasn't open-minded about it. Oh, Janelle, that's such a great story. And I think with entrepreneurs, we we have to always, you know, yes. we've got to be flexible. We've got to think differently. Um, and I think that's so important for our mm. entrepreneurs to do that, to be able to question things. Absolutely. W without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, that that is absolutely correct. And, you know, and it actually is to be able to see the world through a completely different lens. And, you know, I always have this notion that, you know, ask a lot of questions, you're going to get a lot of answers, you know, mm -hmm. and that that is, there's context just in me saying that, like there's a lot of power in that. Um, and, and I think that a lot of, I think that, that, that the other thing that I want to say to what you, to your son is that, that, that simplicity is where the power is. It's not in the complexity, yeah. 
So self-help is so complex, you're never going to get to your destination. But when you start thinking simplistically, you're going to get a lot of power there. That's the answers are there. Yeah. And I think we have that many belief systems, you know, that we yep. can uh and and the thing is with a belief, a strong belief, it's so ingrained that sometimes you never question it. So true. So true. And so, uh, you know, one of the things in our family is we often will, and, and again, my son was is is the perfect exa- example of that. You know, and kids are too. It's like, why? You've got two two boys. Two boys. Two boys. And, you know, when they're young, the, the biggest the biggest word that they say often is why. <laughs> yes. I have to do it this way. Uh-huh. Right? For what reason? For what purpose? Um, and so if we can keep doing that, I think that's um, a great thing to do to question our beliefs. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Yep, yeah, I'm comfortable <laughs> in that place, that's for sure. <laughs> so um, so this whole uh, this whole podcast is on being your own best coach and you've been in business for a long time. You've got all of these hours of knowledge. You're a mum. You've got two boys. How do you how do you be your own best coach, Mary? I spend a lot of time in reflection, self-reflection. I really and I give myself that every day. Uh, whether it's 15 minutes or an hour, it's I have to do it. Yeah. Um, and when I say in self-reflection, like it's really feeling discomfort in my body, like wherever I feel discomfort or uncertainty or I've got a question that I can't answer. I really sit with that, Janelle. And I have found that to be so powerful, you know, like really, really consciously being fully aware of my body and what I'm feeling in my body and just go there and just, and and help it transcend out of me. And that's a work that I do on a daily basis. Um, But also, I am a massive advocate of mentorship. You know, I don't think that I would be where I am today had I not had all those mentors that have been on my journey for a very long time. And at the moment, and I also choose, I never choose mentors that are like gurus or they're on Facebook or things like that. I always choose mentors that have a very, very, very strong academic background in the, from the standpoint of very well researched. That's what I'm looking for because I want that knowledge. And, you know, and when you tap into that knowledge, my mentor said to me, even yesterday, I said to him, when I, when I speak to you, you know, he's very calming and he's just so expansive. And, and I ask lots of questions and you you think that they're going to answer in a certain way, but they're so simple in the way that they answer. And I said to him, whenever I leave you, I just get this download of information that I just cannot stop writing or thinking. Like this ideas just keep coming up. And he says, that's because I'm transmitting my knowledge, my inner knowledge into you. And you're giving that to the people that you touch. And I just thought, I sat with that yesterday, Janelle. I was like, oh my God, he's so right. And, I, and I'm and i transmitting. That's exactly right. So what he's transmitting into me, I'm now transmitting to you over this call, you know, and, and the people that are listening are also getting the transmission as well. So it's not like there's like this, 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 um, you know, how those in that femme movement, they always use this language like, oh, I've just received codes that, you know, I've given my, my clients. And I'm like, what is, what is that? Like, that's just, I just don't like language like that. There's no codes. We are our, as my mentor says, Mary, all of us are walking in trauma and all of us are our own shaman. There is no one outside of you that can save you or heal you. You are your own shaman. I'm like, oh my God, that is so true. So anyone that promises, oh, I'm going to download codes or I'm going to transmit some some codes from yeah, some dimension yeah. into you. I, I don't know about you, Janelle, but I just find that complete trash, you yeah. know, because no one's going to tap into my soul. I can tell you that. Yeah. My soul and my mind are protected at all all costs at all costs there's no one that taps into that space except me Mm -hmm. and so for me you know where I find my balance is you know a lot of self-reflection of course mentorship you know I write a lot um, and just really try to stay 
very grounded. I'm a very, very patient person, which that's a, that's a learned trait. I had, I've had i learned how to become very, very patient. I was never like that, but I've learned it's taken me like 12 years to get to this point where I can just be still and not react, but respond to you know, the field and just work with it, you know, in any given moment, because there's so much uncertainty in the world. And our job is not to react to it. Or if you can, you know, it's, it, it's so uh, empowering when you can just sit with what's happening around you and just be, you know, grounded and feel like you're in control of just where you're at right in this moment. So I don't have any rituals. I don't do meditation. I don't do yoga. I don't do any of that thing. I really just sit with my body and I feel this is just my feeling through all of my learnings that my body plays a significant role in my success because it's my emotions get processed in my body. Yeah. It, it's, it sounds like I'm talking to me <laughs> because just, well, just recently I've uh, been doing that, Mary, and I hadn't done that before. So, so with, a lot of work I do, it's very much about how we communicate to ourselves and being our own best coach and yes. the words that we say, the tonality that we yes. say them in, yes. how our body language is. You know, I've done a lot of work in regards to that. But one of the things, and it's just recently that I've been doing, is doing some trauma training and educating myself in trauma and I realised that that is one thing I don't or I didn't do was sit and listen to my body. Like yeah. I know it sounds so simple probably to a lot of people that it might might be listening, mm. but it's something I just didn't do. And I've mm. and when I say just recently, I'm talking the last months. Right. So when I go for a walk, my my happy place I call is is either the kitchen cooking or the beach. And so what I've done now is part of what I do is when I go for a walk. Uh, and when you talk about patience, it's interesting because I'm I, that's something I'm still working on as well. But one of the things I've I've had tra a challenge with is is fitting so much into my day and thinking. You know, yeah. coming from a thinking yes space. yes all the time it's thinking 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 and and so I'd go on a walk and I'd go oh I'm going to do a podcast I'm going to do you know I'm going to do a, a, a Facebook live and and then and then I'll listen to an audio book and and I'm pushing everything into my <laughs> walk right and I was so freaking good at it <laughs> you know? I love it. Um, and then I saw oh my god trauma training Oh. I'm thinking, when do I just freaking stop? Yes. And I had this cough for a long, long time, a long time, and I just couldn't get rid of it. And so what I started to do is exactly what you're talking about. I would, there's one chair, one little chair, and it's a wonky sort of old-fashioned chair that when I get to it, I sit there and there's the beautiful beach and I just stop beautiful. and I sit there. And I sometimes do, I do a prayer, so I might pray, and then and another time, I, and then I will go right. I'm just going to sit there and feel, and just stop and feel what's in my body. Wow. And I've been so shocked, mm -hmm. Mary, in mm -hmm. regards to what I'm finding. Mm. And what I'm finding is, well, at first, and I say about my cough, what I kept finding was that I had heaviness here. Oh, in my throat and so and I could feel it yes and I'm like <laughs> all I was doing was paying attention to my body and it, and and I was a little bit shocked because I'm like this has been here all this time and I've never freaking noticed it yeah it's and for then real. the other thing I'm f finding is down the my my lower belly yes I'm feeling sometimes tension and then yes. yesterday when I went for a walk as I'm just feeling my body, I realized I was clasping my hands really tight. Oh my God, Janelle. And I, what's with that? So then I just let that go. That's awesome. Noticed it. Um, but as I said, I, you know, I've been coaching for a very, very long time and I talk a lot about communication. But this is the one thing that I'm learning now. 
Well, Janelle, you know, I was raised with a serial narcissistic mother, like serial. And my childhood was just in like hell. Like it's any way I can describe it. Yeah. Now, from the standpoint of it's just felt like I lived in this prison with this woman that would just, you know, dictate what was good for me, what was bad for me, what I was going to have, what I wasn't going to have, who I was going to be, who I wasn't going to be, who I was going to marry, who I wasn't going to marry, what I was going to study. I mean, could you imagine living like that your whole childhood and teenage years with this psychopath, you know? And so, so I really developed this very strong re resilience, but also I spent a lot of time in my imagination like it was my escape it was the only way I can get out of that reality and into this other reality and I started to um you know I, like really understood the power of imagination even my mentor said to me yesterday like wow your imagination is so vivid he said it's very very rare that people can get to that detail so oh no 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 like I I can live there for a whole day like and be very comfortable he was laughing because we well, don't do it too often so I won't. <laughs> but but the thing is that what I had to learn, Janelle, this is very important, is that when I went on, I did uh, in 2012, I went on a 12 month sabbatical, no friends, no credit cards, no shopping, no, no outside world. I shut myself up to the world. I wow. had to my life. Like one full year of having a professor in philosophy mentor me and a professor in the emotional body mentor me. And uh, 12 months of that. I learned about what I'm what we're talking about now back then because I was in serious trauma. I didn't know that, Janelle. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and and so and it's been a working progress. Like it and 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 I am I don't I don't like to use the word fixing. I'm not I would never fix myself. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm evolving and learning. But yeah. also, Janelle, through that process, what I learned is this that I don't look at my mother and have anger or remorse, nothing like that. I've learned how to look at that situation and go, wow, she did that for me to be where I am today. Like, wow, wow. Like, because I gave that meaning a whole new story, right? I gave it a completely new meaning. Instead of me being angry with that, I looked at that and think, wow, the pain that she was in and chose to be in that pain to allow me to grow and become this lotus flower, wow. Because I would not have accumulated all of this knowledge had I not experienced that. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And, and live this life with my eyes wide open. And so when we give meaning to different things and when we understand what trauma feels like in our body, it's a real game changer. Yeah. And just that self, you know, self-awareness, is the, the the first step to be yes. able to create that change 100 percent. yeah and and uh and i think you know that something happened recently too when we moved as you know we've moved into a new house just yes. just two days before christmas yes was just a, a, amazing uh but one of the things that i also noticed uh then was even the thought when when there's something that scares me or frightens me that I retreat yes yes and it's and and it can be as simple as you know they were putting our um <laughs> they had to carry up our our uh beautiful beautiful uh concrete table and I was so fearful that they were going to break it so I I went off I took off <laughs> and I went into the pantry like, <laughs> and, I'm like and then I'm like what the frig are you doing but, I, but it was in my awareness and it was, you know, one of my mentors says, you know, I'm a walking, talking amusement to myself because I know what I'm doing. Oh, God, you know, you're funny. I, I, you know, so I see that. I'm like, Let's I'm go. in the pantry. Oh, you know. Hiding because of the table that might get broken. Oh, you're hilarious. You know? um, but I think that awareness is, is so, and, you know, it sounds like you've got so much awareness around you and your being. And um, yes. I think that we've got to, continue to to do that to be our own best coach yes as I said I've done so much work in it and then and something as simple as listening to your body I haven't done I'm like what? JJ 
but know, it's true. It's, That's why I'm it's, saying simplicity is where the power is. People don't understand that. They want complex because we've been brainwashed to believe that it's too hard to do this and that. And it, it's, oh my God, the amount of information that you need to get to seven figures or, you know, be a, you know, heal yourself or find your soulmate. Like, oh my God, like you got to get, you know, this and you got to get that and you got to go here. And I'm just saying, but really it's just simple. <laughs> like it's so simple. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Well, how can our audience get in touch with you? How can they follow you, Mary? Please follow me on LinkedIn at Mary Henderson Coaching. You can connect with me on my personal Facebook page, Mary Henderson Coaching. Email me, Mary at Mary Henderson Coaching, or go to my website, MaryHendersonCoaching.com. Beautiful. And because you've had some, are you still having those webinars? Because I know that you've had some webinars in the past do you still have those yes at the moment uh we are running a uh, a three-hour virtual event uh on april the 16th i think for uh, australian uh, australian time um and that is uh called a 30-day program accelerator where i'm going to actually break down the four parts of building a premium program uh so you can get premium clients and it really is based on my 22 years of experience so it's wow. worth it. yeah. so they can just jump on your website can they to get the link for that just jump on my website or i'll give you the link janelle and you can paste it okay. underneath the the, the youtube uh, the um the podcast yeah awesome love it love it and so what's next for you mary you you created all of this amazing stuff what's what's next what's something exciting that's happening for you i you know janelle i am so incredibly passionate about uh, educating uh, men and women who are holders of wisdom. I cannot tell you how passionate I am about this. I truly believe that the only way we can solve all of these crazy issues and the crises that we find ourselves in this crazy world is through wisdom. It can't be done through information. It can't be done just on knowledge alone. Knowledge is too linear. It really is through wisdom. And I like to educate people that they are sitting on a gold mine, quite literally sitting on a gold mine. And once I show people that, they're like, oh, my God. And so wisdom is the new economy. The ones that jump on that wave now are the ones that are going to be the game changers of the future. And that's what I that's my message. So I'm going to continue with that until I try and get as many people, you know, to wake up and realize that they are seriously holding on to multi-million dollar of intellectual currency yeah what a beautiful purpose i love it i love it Thanks, oh, we're gonna have some fun now mary i've got some i've got some fun questions have you got some fun questions for me i Should do you- oh, i actually oh, do that's exciting well i'll do you first <laughs> okay so your 10 rapid fire questions are you ready got it go what's the best piece of advice that you have been given Oh my God. Um, best piece of advice I've been given. Um, breathe it out. Breathe it out. <sighs> Love it. <Okay. laughs> what is your superpower? Oh, definitely unpacking people and converting that into a solution. 100%. Who would play you in a movie? Uh, I think um, I would say uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh-huh. I think, yeah, I've always, uh, I love her, but I think she would play me in the movie. I think. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I was going to say Cameron Diaz. Yeah, or Cameron Diaz, yeah, because you said something about Mary, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I've got a bit of quirkiness about me as well. So a lot of my clients say I'm really, really funny, but I don't know, you know, so maybe maybe either either or, either one of those two. <laughs> uh, what's one thing on your bucket list? Um... Oh God. Um, well, it's definitely not something like flying out of the out of a plane, that's for sure. <laughs> Falling out of a plane. I'm not interested in that. You know, Janelle, I think that um, I mean, this is a big dream, but you know, I would love my business to I would love to move to the US with my business. That would be something that I would love to do. Yeah, great. What's the favorite thing that you like to cook or eat? Oh my God. Um Okay, anything, anything from casseroles to lasagna to pasta. But I think that my signature is probably my pasta sauce. Like I spent a lot of time, you know, like yesterday I spent eight hours cooking the sauce to put in the freezer. 
But, oh, Janelle, I get so much pleasure out of it. Oh, we're going to have to talk about this after. Because <laughs> you know I'm a passionate cook too. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, where is your favourite holiday destination? Um, mm, I would say Italy, 100%. Yeah. You, anywhere in particular in Italy? But definitely Venice. I mean, I just love Venice. I have so many amazing memories of Venice and I still love it till this day. Uh, we we uh, I had the best pasta dish there, but oh. still the, it was gnocchi with three cheeses. Stop. And I know, we still talk about it. I can't make gnocchi, so I'll have to come to your house for that. I can't do that. <laughs> That's the one thing I cannot do. Oh, teach is very easy. Uh, what's your favourite book? Um, I think, uh, yeah, Dr. David Hawkins' um, uh Power versus force, I think, or letting it go, letting go, either one of those two. Okay, I haven't, I haven't uh, read either of those, so that's good. I'll have to add those to my list. What would you tell your seventeen-year-old self? Oh my god, I would just say, you go and do what you want to do, and just do it. That's it. Period. <laughs> in those, that. in those words. What is something that not many people know about you? Oh, that my voice is professionally trained from the age of five to 20. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Love that. What legacy do you want to be remembered for? Exactly what I said before. I want to be the person that unlocks wisdom in all these amazing people that are sitting on a gold mine and are doing nothing with it. I want people to say she was the one that unlocked me or helped me unlock myself, I should say rather. And that's what I want to be known for. Love it. What a beautiful legacy. Thank Love you. it. Okay, now I'm ready for my questions. Okay, here we go. Oh, All right. right. Okay, go. What is your favourite ingredient to cook with? My favourite ingredient? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> One ingredient. <laughs> One ingredient. <laughs> Oh my goodness! What would be my one ingredient? I can't say just one, but I look. I could say I love pasta. Yes, well, you're a queen of cooking pasta, that's for sure. Okay, <laughs> what is the book that changed your life? Uh, Awaken the Giant. Well, well, first I'd say the Bible, but then I will say Awaken the Giant Within. I love that. Who would you want to meet that is no longer living? Uh meet that I haven't met before. That's that's no longer living. That's dead. Who would you want to meet that is no longer living? Oh. Uh, oh. Who would I like to meet that's no longer living? Oh, um, there's so many people, but one that just comes to mind because I'm looking at cooking books, Antonio Coluccio. Oh, yes. Yes, yes absolutely. Um, what does spirituality mean to you? Uh, spirituality means a connection with God and a connection with self. What is your one core value? Love. Describe what you do. Can you describe what you do in less than five words? Empower. Five words. Less than five words. <laughs> less than five words. Does that mean five? Maximum. Our leaders. Impa to empower others. Oh, you go. There you go. Empower Yay! To empower exactly. others. Bye. I love it. I love it. <laughs> what is your favorite song? My favorite song. Uh, oh, there's two that just come up for me. There's lots of songs I like, but two that comes up for me. One is uh, an Elvis Presley song, oh. which is uh, oh, what is it? What's it called? <laughs> The love is about love. They're oh. all love. Ah, I love it. Anyway, and it was our wedding song. So it's that one. Oh. And there's also I a... can't help. Oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Oh, is that the <laughs> one? Yeah, that's it. Uh, we danced to it on on the weekend. Actually, it's lovely. Oh. Um, but then the other one I'd have to say, which well, I suppose it, you wouldn't say it's my favourite song as if, if I love it, but it's uh, a song that my dad used to, I lost my dad when I was 17. So it was a song that he used to play a lot and it's a wow. little German boy called Heinji and it's about, uh, it's a song about his mama 
and oh, yeah, that's cool. something that every oh, time. I love that. Wow, yeah, that's gorgeous. I really love that. So I've got his album. Um, oh, Janelle, that's, that's gorgeous. He gave me, yeah. So all right, yeah. next question: What lesson did you learn from your first broken heart? What lesson? Oh, well, the broken heart uh, wasn't that. I suppose my broken heart was I was in a, an abusive relationship, so uh, my lesson was to re- stand up for myself wow i love that and 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 uh have boundaries yeah what do you love about yourself i love that i care passionately about others yes you're very kind that's for sure i can validate that what can you do that no one else can do like you what can i do I just, I would say coach the way that I coach because I think that each coach has has something unique about them and my coaching style is mm-hmm. it's very unique to me. I love it. And, of I course, love. can we just throw in that you're like a master chef? Like can we just throw that in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you realise that you would be my like my dream next door neighbor, like my dream. If I had a dream next door neighbor, it would be you, Janelle, right? <laughs> I'd be like, Janelle, I've got this amazing recipe. Can we just make it together? <laughs> well, I was going to make you something if you oh. were coming here. Oh, don't worry. That's plenty of other times. Don't you worry about that. This is not the first and the last, I can assure you. <laughs> so that's all my 10 questions? That's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. I love putting the pressure back on me. It's so interesting when I do the 10 questions, it's like, oh, oh, I've got But it's such a great thing. idea because it's kind of like it's you learn about people, you know, when you ask those questions. So I really, really enjoyed writing them too. So it was yeah. so thank I'm grateful you for, for that. that. Thank you, Mary, for such you, a now. wonderful uh thank you for your time. And I love what you do and I love your heart-centered coaching and your transformation that you're focused on. And I love that your SAS program sounds so amazing and it's unique. You know, yes. it's, you know, I haven't spoken to anyone that has something like that. So, and of course, that's just uh, an indication of, of how you've unpacked yourself and how yes. great you are at unpacking others to really have your uniqueness come out and shine so that you can transform Thanks, others. Thank so you. I really love that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, for Mary. Me. And um, yeah, thank you for all of your wonderful insights. And I'm sure that the audience um, has written lots of notes and uh, remembering to get in, in contact with you and uh, yeah, and, and get all of your beautiful knowledge and to use that CES pro- program because I think that's amazing. Thanks, Janelle. Thank you so much for having me.